everybody! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Colleen Welsh, the coach for freelance writers. If you've ever peeped the freelance writing job boards, you've probably seen phrases like must know SEO, SEO experience required. This scares off a lot of new freelance writers. But buddy, don't be afraid. It's actually pretty simple to write an SEO friendly blog post. So today we're going to talk about what SEO is, how it works, and how to write SEO friendly blog posts. For the sake of this video, I will be using WordPress because it is one of the most popular blogging platforms and it is the one that I use, but you can use these same tactics for whatever blogging platforms your clients are on. Let's get this break. So what is SEO? SEO stands for search engine optimization. Search engine optimization means strategically changing a website to make it appeal to search engines. If you don't know how search engines work, let me tell you. Search engine use bots that crawl the internet. As they crawl, they pick up clues from each website to learn what it's all about. Then the search engine indexes that information and uses it to rank the website against other websites that have a similar subject. Then if someone searches for that subject, it displays the ranking as search results. So SEO basically manipulates the search engine into thinking that your website is the best website for that particular subject. So back in the day, it was really easy to trick search engines. All you had to do to rank number one on Google was keyword stuff, which basically means entering a bunch of keywords into your content, even if it makes it completely unreadable to humans. But search engines wised up to this practice. Now the search algorithms are very sophisticated. Basically, they're looking for excellent, relevant content, not fluff. So let's talk about how we give that to them. A little side note here. As a freelance writer, it is not your job to manage your client's total SEO strategy. If it were, they would have to pay you a lot more. As a blog writer, you are just the technician. You are just contributing a piece to the SEO puzzle. Even though this is how you optimize a blog post for search engines, this is by no means everything that a business should be doing to optimize their website for search engines. But as a freelance writer, all you need to know is how to optimize your blog post for search engines. So let's get into how to do that. Step one is keyword research. Some clients, AKA the clients who really do know about SEO will take care of this step for you. Like I said, as a freelance writer, it's not really your job to manage your client's SEO strategy. So the clients who take care of this for you will send you a list of keywords to include in each blog post. They'll also probably give you some guidance on the density that they would like for each keyword. So what's density? I'm so glad you asked. Density is how many times you include a keyword in your blog post. Right now, SEO experts believe that one to 2% keyword density is the best. So that means if you were writing a 1000 word blog post, you would include your main keyword 10 to 20 times in the text. But if your client does not provide keywords for you, you'll have to do the keyword research yourself. So let's talk about how to do that. There's a lot of different keyword research tools out there, but the one that I always use because it's free is Google AdWords. So you're going to go to ads.google.com and log in with your Google login, your email address or whatever. Then you're going to go up here to tools and settings and select keyword planner. So for the sake of this exercise, I'm just going to look up the keywords for my next blog post, but you'll look up the topics for your clients. So my next blog post that I'm doing is going to be on how to deal with rejection. Let's type in some phrases around that how to deal with rejection, dealing with rejection, handling rejection, accepting rejection, you know, stuff we all gotta deal with. So then after you enter in your phrases, you're gonna hit get results. And then you're gonna come down here and sort average monthly searches. And you wanna go from the highest amount of searches to the lowest. And then you're going to say add filter and go to competition and choose low and medium. I, I wanna eliminate anything that's like high competition that a lot of people are trying to rank for because when you choose a low competition keyword, it makes it easier to achieve the number one or two 
spot in Google search rankings. The top search term is how to deal with rejection. It has 2,400 average monthly searches and the competition is low. So that's awesome. And then here's some other ideas, how to handle rejection, dealing with rejection, how to get over rejection. So you're gonna choose the most popular low competition keyword in the ranking. That's gonna be your main keyword. And then you can also grab a few other popular search terms that are related and then know that you just wanna include those a few times in the text as well. And that'll give Google a better idea of what your blog post is about. So now that we have our keyword research completed, we're going to do step two, which is to write our post in Google Docs. Hopping on over to Google Docs, I like to start every blog post by adding all the keywords at the top so that when I'm writing the post, I can just refer back to this at the top and makes it super easy for me instead of like going back and forth between a spreadsheet or something. This is just one part of how to write a great blog post. If you want to learn more about writing great blog posts, check out this video here. So you want your blog post to stay as relevant as possible to the keywords. So don't go off on a random tangent. As I said before, you want to hit one to 2% keyword density in the post. Try to spread the keywords out throughout the post. And when I say one to 2% keyword density, I mean specifically your main keyword. So on this post, it is how to deal with rejection. I want to include these other related keywords throughout the post also, but not as many times. So there are also a few places where you wanna make sure that you include your chosen keyword. One is in the title of the blog post. So I just made up a title real quick, and that is how to deal with rejection, seven proven methods. You also want to include your keyword in the intro paragraph, preferably as close to the beginning of the post as possible. So I just started this one with, Learning how to deal with rejection is so important. I would actually, you know, I'd write something better than that IRL, but this works. And you also want to include your keyword and at least one sub headline. So we have this learning how to deal with rejection. This is a sub headline and it also includes the keyword. If you use Google Docs, you can just use command F to pull up the find function and then you can type in your keyword and it will tell you how many times it is in the post. So that will help you to keep track of your keyword density. Step three, create links. This is a really good time to say that a big part of SEO is linking. So anytime a web page links to your blog post, that improves its search engine ranking. You would really be missing out by not linking to your client's other blog posts in this blog post. So this is where it really helps to have a content calendar for your client. This is a place where you can track all of your client's targeted keywords. You can quickly skim through and figure out what links would be appropriate for this post. If you don't know how to make a content calendar for your clients, check out this video. So basically when the targeted keyword for another blog post comes up in the text of the post that you're writing right now, Highlight that keyword and link to that post. When Google sees that, Google will know that is what that post is about and it'll improve the search engine ranking for that post. So the more that you link, the better off all the blog posts will be. And that's why creating more content is better. So now it's time to upload the post to the client's blog. For the purpose of this video, I will be doing a WordPress upload. However, the terminology that I am using would apply to any other blogging platform that your client may use. So first things first, copy and paste your blog post into WordPress. And then you wanna correct the formatting so that it looks pretty. Make sure this is like an H2 heading, blah, blah, blah. Once you've corrected the formatting, it's time to add some pictures. I like to use either iStock or Unsplash to add stock photography. So I'm just gonna grab a picture now. So I don't know, I'll just search projection, see what comes up. Oh, great, perfect. These dudes, wonderful. Okay, so then you just add the photo in, just drag and drop it. So once a photo loads, then you're going to add the alt text, which is right here. Alt text makes websites more accessible because it explains what's in the image for readers that cannot see. It also tells the search engine what is in the picture, and that is how you get images to show up in Google image search. Keep that in mind when writing your alt text. You want to include at least one of your keywords, yes, but you also want to adequately describe what's going on in the picture. So in this one, I might say like how to deal with Rejection, man in toga rejects other man with rose. I don't know, something like that. I'm just describing what's in the picture. Okay, so then the next thing you're gonna do is update the URL. The slug is the phrase that comes at the end of the URL. And the URL, by the way, is the website address that's in this bar up at the top. In case you don't know, you want to make sure that you update the slug of the URL so that it is your keyword or your keyword phrase, because otherwise it'll just take your whole blog post title and you don't want that. So in WordPress, 
It says permalink up here. You just hit edit and see how this says seven proven methods at the end. I'm going to get rid of that. I just wanted to say how to deal with rejection and hit okay because that is my chosen keyword for this post. So another thing that you can do is change your SEO title. So this will be the title that shows up in Google search results. So the way you do this is by scrolling down underneath the, the actual like text of the blog post. I have this plugin called Yoast SEO, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And um, you can edit the snippet and see this is the SEO title down here. And it gives you a preview of what it's gonna look like. So if I didn't want it to say how to deal with rejection seven proven methods, I could change it. So it could say how to deal with rejection from clients or something instead. So here's the slug again, this is the URL. So this is a good idea if your client wants like more spicy, clickbaity headlines, but that's not really necessarily gonna work on Google because on Google, you really want to be sure that the people that are coming to your page know exactly what the blog post is about. Then the last thing to do is add your meta description. So this is the preview text that is underneath the title in the search results. So you can write that right here. You want to write something that's going to entice readers to click on the post, but keep it under 155 characters and make sure you include your keyword in it. If your client uses WordPress, have them download the Yoast plugin. This plugin provides a checklist of all the SEO tasks that you need to do for each blog post. It also gives you a rating on each blog post depending on how optimized it is. And it gives you some feedback on your writing to make it more clear and precise. Okay, so I know this is kind of a lot. Um, so if you're brand new to SEO, totally get it. This can be really confusing. I have a free downloadable checklist on my website. You can access it in the freebies tab of my website or I'll link it down below also. So depending how you roll, you can print this out, put it next to your desk and refer to it when you're writing blog posts, or you can just keep it open as, you know, one of your collection of tabs. No judgment here. You've seen my workspace, so. Okay, so those are the basics of SEO for freelance content writers. If you like this post, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, on that, leave them as comments below. That's all for me today, so I'll see you soon, buddy. Bye bye. Oh, oh, I thought that was a deer, it's just a man. I had to look here, look at the camera, Colleen. Don't look at yourself. Don't look at yourself. Zippity doo da, what am I looking at? Okay.